Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Capes and Commentaries podcast. I'm Tyler Baker, and with me, as always, my good old bestest buddy in the whole wide world, <laughs> Nasty Nate Kennedy. Hello. How the hell are you tonight, dude? Uh, well, I'm doing okay, but I, I'm. it's starting to really sink in that these last 18 days I've had off for the company-wide shutdown at my job is going to come back and uh, bite me in the ass because I get to go back to work tomorrow. And I just got the text from Emily that I guess she's on her way. So I, I, well, tell her just hang around outside for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, we'll tell be done in about 45 Bell. minutes. You're just yeah, just tell her to hang tight. tight. But no, I, I, I'm dreading going back. I'm not looking forward to just the, the, the plethora of idiocracy that I have to withstand on a, on a daily basis. I imagine I'll be there maybe 30 minutes, and I'll be like, all right, I'm tired of looking at these people. Can I get 18 more days off? So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I'm sure I'll text you and be like, oh, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, God. I hate my life. I hate my job, oh, but it's so great. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go pick a fight. And I showed Tyler beforehand, because he, he can't really see me on this, but I popped by my local Walmart. They had one left on the shelf. Got got Soundwave here, $50, so... Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that's, that's a good dent in, into your wallet. And with the Thundercat Super 7, it's been confirmed that they are going to be going along. We're going to gonna get quite a few figures. Yeah, quite a few yeah. figures. There we go. That's a tongue twister for you. Yeah, I, I was so relieved to see that because that's all I needed to hear. And I don't. I, it doesn't matter to me when they announce it, but just someone 16 figures are planned four at a time. That's all we needed to know. And that puts all stress at ease. Well, like, no more stress. Well, I don't need to worry. There's... Well, who all do you have right now from from the uh, the Maddie line? I got all of them. Well, how many were released? They did a Comic Con exclusive of Wally Kit and Wally Cat. They did Pumara, Panthro, Mumra, Jackal, and Lino. Okay, so you just essentially you just have to get past this first wave, and you're good to go. Yeah, that's why I was so disgruntled. And I, I saw somebody because Kevin, our buddy Kevin Sharp, posted and something uh, a post. That's how I found out about it. And I read somebody said, "Oh, now all his crybabies can you know shut up." And I'm like, "Where the hell is this jerk off?" Like, you know, everybody's got a right to be upset. That led to believe that oh, they're restarting again. You know, because I feel like that's kind of the norm with a lot of these lines. It's just over again, and, and it's the same group again. Even though Thundercast has never been given like a fair shake, um, but I thought, what an asshole! <laughs> Even though he's entitled to his opinion, but everyone's you know, opinions like assholes. Everyone's got right. one, Ho- but his was dumb. Ho- ho- hopefully, not a, a listener or follower of any of the podcasts that we do. Oh, I, really, I really don't care because <laughs> I, I, if they if they listen to this podcast, this one or fans of part, they know how disgruntled I am about the idea that when these lines are, hey, we're starting up again. But here are the same characters again. It's just frustrating, right. you know, because you want to feel like you can be part of the action and support it as well. I mean, if if it was something that, um, you know, they were going to release these ultimate versions, much like with the the, uh, the uh, Mojo Classics, and you know, like the vent kind of the vintage style card back, and they were going to do that with Thundercats with the black card with the chrome lettering and the Battlemat action kind of logo, and then on the back you've got like this nice colorful uh, background. Uh, with the, with the characters and, and uh, you know like the, all the the Thundercats and their and their allies and you've got the evil mutants and all those guys like that'd be really cool. Um, but sixteen figures, which um, I think it's safe to say, you know, Tigra, Chitara, Bengali, probably Pumira again, Linkso, all all four of the mutants from Vulture Man to Monkey and to Slythe, uh, maybe Rotaro, maybe Groon, maybe Jaga, maybe. One of the berserkers, maybe one of the lunatics. Finally, maybe one of the burbles. It's just there's there's so many. Uh, pos- Hell, it could be one of the unreleased uh, uh, berserkers, like uh, cannon blaster, and um, I forgot what the other one was. There was like two of them, I think. But uh, sixteen figures. That that's really damn good. So here's hoping that next week or is it? That'd be this weekend. This weekend at PowerCon. Yeah. Super Seven will be there and, and announce like, or at least throw hints at like the the, the first. Brand new four group of figures that are coming out, you know, just something. But hey, I'm I, but I, I'm I'm perfectly happy with just knowing sixteen figures were coming, and I'm good. Yeah, I'm I, good. I, so. uh, 
I guess I'll pre-order that, that first wave here in the next week or so. I got I got to wait to get paid again and get some funds flowing. Since when do you need to wait to get paid? Flowing. You don't know. You don't know hardship. <laughs> I got to get some money flowing back into my account again, and then I'll I'll pull the trigger on those because that's probably easily going to be like two hundred bucks. Oh yeah, uh, but I'd like to think if if, if all are going to be shipping at the same time, you're going to, you know. It'll be fifty. It, I, I, I guess it's like for super, it always feels like it's a flat rate. Fifteen dollars to ship. No matter All right, what so one ninety five may as well be two hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It might as well, yes, be two hundred dollars yeah. for all those figures. So, but at least you get the option of open mouths. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just just, uh, just uh, another extra head that I got to toss into my little uh, plastic divider for all the accessories like accessories are great with figures and shit but i don't need like 27 different hands and four different heads and all because all i do with those is just they go into a bin all together i har- I yeah. very rarely change out anything on my figures i put it with the way that i want to and then i'm done with it i don't go back and i'm like well wh- what if i do this instead that very rarely does that happen I don't do that because most of these figures are so easily they, they break so yep. easily. Like whether it's Deca, and I'm not running the risk of, of doing that with the He Man figures. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I I find the head, and you know if, if the hands need to hold something, I put those hands in, and that's it. They're not being touched. The figures go in a bag. I, I'm just building up a collection of just hand of just body parts that I, I'll never use, but I don't have the heart to like just discard them oh uh, yeah for the no, sake no, no. of you know I, I mean i guess if anything we could take up uh, just send everything to joe and he can just use those right yeah and then he could just buy me a, a tank on t public with one of those prints and just send it to me because i'm sending him all these body parts you know it's compensation there, there we go. or something like yeah. that though but uh but yeah good news about thundercat so it's nice to hear something uh pretty legit so um but i'm also not going to expect uh, big reveals at PowerCon because I feel like a- anytime something we're expecting announcement, like we got nothing back in February in a very lackluster, forgettable reveal at San Diego. So I- I'd be very shocked to see anything uh, you never know. for the good people at PowerCon. I mean, I-, I would hope so. It would be nice to see something meat and juicy to be excited about, but uh, probably not. So uh, I'll probably still get upset because you just feel like, damn it, man. Right. Yeah. Show me something. <laughs> Anything, please. Yeah. I mean, my taxes pay your all salaries. You know, give us something, damn it. You know, I'm the reason that this toy line is still around and Nathan and Joe and everybody else. We deserve pictures or, or something, a roadmap, you know, not just, you know. Even if it's it, just we, a prototype, no, no color yeah. to it. It can just be a gray, gray computer uh, 3D model. Just let me, yep. let me know that something's coming. Or just give me the names of the first four or the names of who's coming. You don't have to show me anything. Just tell me these are locked in. We just have not, they're not ready yet right. or something like that, you know. So Well just something to help me sleep at night. Let's uh let's move on from the toy talk and Tyler go ahead and lead us into uh, the episode that we're doing today. We're going back to G.I. Joe. Yeah. G- give us a little I've, follow uh, into this. Yeah, we're gonna do the first part to the Serpentor mini series that, that brings him about and brings him into the main uh, uh, show and also it coincides with what's going on in the comic books as well. If you were reading the the comic book series when this was going on, they're both coinciding uh, with each other. The comic book um, storyline's a bit different than this one. Um, not drastically different, but like Sergeant Slaughter is not a pivotal part at all in it. And Serpentor is created as like a warrior in the comics to serve Cobra as opposed to uh, a new leader, which I, I thought was kind of interesting. Um, cause I, as a kid, I never got to see a rise of pencil or rise. The VHS was not made available and I never saw the, the five parter played on TV at all. Well, I was going to say just, like with the VHS, did it include all five parts or did they have it? Split I think up so. Multiple releases. No, I think it was just all five episodes on one take. Well, I guess if you think um, about it, that would be, a, what a little over a hundred minutes. So yeah, I guess I could all easily fit on a VHS tape. Yeah, so. yeah. Just I mean, it's about I mean, because the 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 eighty seven movies, you know, about ninety minutes. Right. Um. So yeah, it, it would it would have fit perfectly on a tape, which probably would have been like the 
the biggest like VHS release of episodes because m- most of the GI Joe tapes back then only had one episode. Yeah, I always um, hated that with just most yeah. of the properties. You either got one episode or two. There were hardly um, ever more than that. The, there were a couple of He-Man releases. There were two VHS tapes that had five episodes, Damn. and there was a couple of She-Ra releases that had five episodes. But for the most part, it was either one or two, and that was it. So, like I think Transformers had one episode. Thundercats. Uh, sometimes would have two, typically one, and G.I. Joe always had one. Do you remember what Um, these would retail for in stores? I never saw them in stores Hmm. because, uh, you know, when when you and I, I think when these tapes came out, they were coming out in like 85, 86. So Uh, primarily we're we're looking at like video store more or less. Like these probably didn't pop up too often in retail then. Yeah, I, I believe me, if if I had seen them at all in Kmart or Hills or anything like that, I, I would have been aching to buy it. But I just I never saw them at all. And they, like, they so. probably would have been more considering uh, the time period, like you were saying, like eighty five, eighty six. We're not too far into like the 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 VCR revolution here, so the, those probably yeah, would have cost a pretty penny had it, if they were in retail. Maybe uh, once we post this, our our buddy. Eric Amon will pop in because he's a huge Joe fan. He probably remembers them being in retail if they were. Yeah, I, I want to say I think probably around the twenty-five to thirty-dollar mark back then. Which back in the eighties, that's a lot of money. Oh yeah, it is uh, for for a VHS. I mean, I I know like in, in a mail order uh, form that was in a uh, the Rambo Three uh, movie magazine. They got Chuck Norris movies, Arnold movies, and Stallone movies. Some of them going as for, for as much as $80. That's crazy. Because they were relatively new to VHS. So He-Man tapes, G.I. Joe, Thundercats would have been 25 probably to $30 a piece. That's why back in the day, you just afford to have two VCRs and just re- record, <laughs> like find a way to record it from the tape like uh, like we used to do all the time. I, 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 I never got to do that, but uh, I knew people who did. Um, I got work with my mom. knew I was a big fan of the He-Man movie and Red Sonja, so he uh, he double taped copies of Red Sonja and the He-Man movie for me, which I still own that He-Man tape to this day. Oh yeah. Um, and my my papa knew somebody who put on a VHS tape Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, and Predator. So we we would borrow that tape from my papa <laughs> off so many times just to watch Predator. Yeah. And then a lot of times to watch Temple of Doom, and I just fast forward to Raiders of the Lost Ark because I just did not care for Raiders as a kid. It was all about Temple of Doom, but uh, mainly just for Predator. I mean, because it was just uh, uh, it was just awesome. Like, oh, we like to rent it. It's, it's can we watch it? So that, that was that was that was exciting to have uh, uh, double tapes or people would, would yeah. bootleg their own copies of stuff yeah. and take it back to the video. Yeah, store. my my parents used to just record off of HBO all the time. All the time, like there would be a tape that would have uh, Lethal Weapon, Ghostbusters, and uh, uh, shit. I want to say like Dirty Dancing. What a, what a combination, <laughs> huh? Yeah, I'll, I don't that, have to that, guess that, which one I would have. Yeah, that, yeah, through. that always sucked because it wasn't in that order either. I want to say it was Lethal Weapon, Dirty Dancing, and then Ghostbusters. So uh. I was fast forwarding through pretty much the entire because t- as a kid, I'm like, all right, well, Lethal Weapon, whatever. Like I, I want to watch yeah. Ghostbusters. Yeah, because I actually didn't watch Lethal Weapon until I think I was in middle school or maybe even. Uh, maybe freshman year of high school. It was just a, a movie that I just. You know, because I didn't see it as like, you know, for me, it was if, if you didn't knew karate or have muscles, I wasn't really that interested. And, you know, the Riggs and Murtaugh are they're a great tag team of cops. But as a kid, it just didn't impress me enough to want yeah. to sit down and watch yeah, it. Same here. You know, to, yeah. to me, seeing it, I was just like. And, and certain movies were different, but uh, for the, I would be like, this is too adult. You know, mm. if that makes any sense, it kind of does, it kind of yeah. doesn't. There's not, see, like with Predator, it was different because there was something to like cling onto. There's like this weird, different thing that's not human. Here, it's just like a bunch of guy. To me, as a kid, it was just like, ah, oh, it's it's cop shit, whatever. Where's the Ghostbusters? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 yeah, because that's that's kind of how I was too. Like, uh, because I felt like Arnold Stallone and Chuck Norris were above and beyond all that. Like, I could watch Chuck being trapped in you know in vietnam as a as a pow you know to watch it now it's you know 
there's not a whole lot of action. Like there's, there's, it's more about telling a story and eventually action builds up. But God, I was front and center for it because it was Chuck Norris. And that's all, that's all, you know, same thing with Rambo and anything Arnold was in, you know, it's that they were, that's what sold me. And yeah, it took, it took me a while to warm up to Mel Gibson. Danny Glover was a different story because Predator too. Right. But, uh, yeah, I, I was the same way. And I, uh, I, I like the Lethal Weapon series, but I don't hold it in the same regard, I think, as most people do. Yeah. I just, I I don't know if it's, it's not because I saw it later in life. I just, I don't, I'm like, same thing with Back to the Future. Back to the Future is a great film, but I don't have that same uh, fanboy mentality that that film gets with pretty much the vast majority. Because I feel like they make time travel to be a big pain in the ass as opposed to something really fun. Right. You know, but. I I, Cause I'm like, I, well, I I like Back to the Future. I like all three. I, yeah, I like all three but of them I, actually. I didn't like the third one, and I've never seen all the second one. Damn. I've just seen pieces of it over the years. Oh, yeah, here we I go. just yeah. <laughs> but I do own the first one because I I do like it. It's a great film, and uh, but I, I just don't have that same passion for uh, for the series like people, most people do. I feel like I'm in, I'm in the vast minority when it comes to. Uh, Lethal Weapon and Back to the Future. I own them. Great films, but it's not. It it's not just... something. Yeah, you know, to me, they're more of uh, not something I choose to actively put in the player or click on any of the streaming stuff. It's like if I if you catch it on TV, you sit and you watch it, kind of movie. That's kind of what's with Back to the Future. Lethal Weapon. Like uh, I know me and my dad. I think a few years ago when he was still living with me, I think we we popped in and watched one and two back to back because I think we were just both interested in watching. Or no, he was like he struck. I was like, yeah, shoot, hell yeah, sit down and watch Lethal Weapon. Yeah. So because I do like the first one. I mean, the first one is a kick ass film. I don't know the sequels that, as well, even though I've seen them all. I just don't know them well, that I can, well. I know the first I, one. Better. I can tell you one thing: the uh, Super Nintendo game sucks ass. <laughs> but it does. It, it did. <laughs> well, and tying it back to that, the the GI Joe game for NES was hard as hell, and I didn't play the second one, which you own yeah. and still have the box. Yeah, for. yeah, yeah. The second one I got my uh, my aunt was working at Roses at the time, and she used her discount, or my parents used her discount rather to get the game for me for my birthday and it was uh at first it was really really tough but it was one uh, like with most of those games you just keep playing keep playing and keep playing yeah and it got a little bit easier uh but that was also a game i never beat um the first gi joe game i always wanted but it was uh one of my dad's co-workers my mom would babysit her kids so we would go over there, and he had a Nintendo and had G.I. Uh, G. Joe, so I watched him play that. I always enjoyed the cover art for that game. It's just a, oh, with yeah, the, with the, it was yeah, a lot of the card yeah, art. Yeah, with the, the white background, and we have you know the Storm Shadow, Snake Eyes. Who else was on the, the cover? Rock there? and Roll, Duke, and um, I want to say it, Captain Gridiron? Maybe. I don't know. Possibly. I, I know on the second one it was General Hawk and his... Uh, uh, Sonic Fighter, uh, the outfit that came with the Sonic Fighter look, and then you got Storm Shadow from Ninja Force, and this and the fourth version of Snake Eyes, which is arguably my favorite, right. next to the the visor yeah. uh, look. Because um, God, that was such a such a kick ass looking Snake Eyes. I don't know why people don't look at that more fondly. Yeah. I just feel like that's that's probably the least appreciated version of Snake Eyes. I think I would uh, wholeheartedly agree with that. But yeah, I, <sighs> I need to I need to go back and. And play both of those GI Joe games. It was cool because I I do remember that game. Like you could pick like from any of the GI Joes, like anytime you wanted, or it was like a different Joe per level or something. It was it, it gave you the option. Like you weren't like locked into either playing the same guy all the time, or you could switch up. It was it may have been something like playing like Silver Surfer or Mega Man. Did not like Mega Man where you could pick any level you want like any time? Yeah, yeah, Mega Man you can pick yeah. any level you want. Yeah, yeah, I think. That first GI Joe game was set up something like that. I'm sure there's a YouTube video of, of like the actual like gameplay itself. Which, um, but I, I have gone back multiple times and watched the arcade gameplay because I you, you set up uh, on my computer years yeah, ago an emulator of that. Yeah, I and, was trying uh, to get uh, trying to get that again, but it didn't want to uh, play for me. I don't I don't know what's messed up on there, but I do I do have the file. I'll I need to just dig around some more. 
because I got yeah. I got WrestleFest. So, oh, so I'll have man. to do that next time you're over, and maybe I can find a way to like stream that because that'd be fun. Um, oh, that'd be a blast, dude. Uh, I might have to mute my microphone here in a second. Okay. Uh, but uh, is there any any other things you want to attack on before we? dive right on into the part one are, are yeah. you wanting to like are we gonna end up watching all these parts like back to back to back to back you want to just do that well, the say next that's, that's, i want to have you watched it already i haven't watched all of it now okay well i mean i kind of based it on if it piques your interest if it piques your interest and you like where it's going i say let's do it i think we because should i think it, we should it, with it, it i'll just say it right now i think we should with it being five parts it would be kind of nice to do it all and it's quite a, a serious tone to it as well. Like it's, it's there's nothing played for laughs. There's nothing silly. Um, and like I said, man, you know, Cobra gets to win for multiple episodes right. to get get you where you need to go, which is really refreshing. And you got so many. Like I said, this first episode alone, with uh, all the new Joes in the first uh, first scene, and then you get all the new members of Cobra. I mean, it's so exciting. I, I mean, because I actually didn't get to see it. Uh, I think. It was on VHS, but I don't think I like because when uh, Rhino Video was doing like the re-releases of the VHS tapes in the late '90s, I had a, uh, one set, but I don't think I had. Maybe I did. I can't remember. But, um, but on DVD, getting to watch it, I mean, it was just like God. I wish I had had it a long time ago, because right. it's it's like it was. It's a very well written five part uh, storyline. I mean, it, it's so damn good, and for and that, that's another thing too. Like when you're watching it, you, you you clearly see they're introducing new characters, and you could say, "Oh, this is a toy commercial," but they weave in the new roster of characters and mix them in with the the old guard quite well. Where you feel like you're getting a nice bag of what you're familiar with, and then the new characters that were available on toy shelves at that time too, and you don't feel like they're taking anybody else's spot. Like it's exciting to see the dreadnought shoes so much and you're getting the new members and you're getting uh dr mindman used a lot you're getting all these new joes mixed in with flint and alpine and duke so it's 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 a great mix it's very well done and sergeant slaughter is such a pivotal part of the series as well too like from from this entire season and the into the deke series as well so so um god i mean it's i just love it all i right, just love well, it dude well, let's let's make that a ha- well, shit if maybe in between we can uh, we'll do the Batman Beyond episode that was requested, and then yeah, we'll kind of go from there. If anything, we can always like do part one, do Batman Beyond, do part two, then do another thing, then come back do part three, another thing, then yeah, alternate, yeah, alternate, just alternate every it. Week. Yeah. yeah, that way we eventually get it done, but we can throw some some other stuff in between there. Yeah, I'm cool with that. All right, man. Well, I guess without any further ado, go ahead and give us the countdown. Link is down below, so you guys can go ahead and click on that and watch along with us at the first part of Arise, Serpentor Arise. All right. Three, two, one, action. This beautiful opening sequence here of attacking the terror drum on the beach here, like Storm of the Beaches of Normandy, and bringing out the new roster of characters right front and center. So I just started punching the shit out of Monkey Wrench. I love this. Which actually, I took uh, part of that that image, and it's 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 on here for the the episode today. Yeah, which I, yeah, I picked that one. It was hard to find a lot of images uh, from this, like that I because when I I post uh, or advertise the podcast, I try to get very specific. I don't want to just throw out just generic images to sell uh, the the advertising. Like I want to use specific specific images from that episode. Right. I might just have to go through and just like uh, take screen caps of, of this episode because it, it's not much to choose from. But uh, all, all, GI Joe always had the, the best uh, intros in terms of like selling like the action, like this one and the uh, the one where they're attacking this giant Cobra ship and uh, Zartan comes out in a trouble bubble. It looks so cool. But this was fun. This opening sequence of just seeing the Joes taking it easy, enjoying some leisure time, and playing baseball and just kind of hanging out. Yeah, you don't get much of that. No, not too often. There's a few episodes where, like, uh, the Viper is coming. You know, you get to see them doing a little R and R. But that shot of, of like the four main lead Joes here, 
which is good to establish because as a kid, I, I assumed Duke was in charge, but you were just kind of confused because Flint was in charge sometimes and then other times Duke was. Right. But this, um, after we see Leatherneck and Wet, so we established their kind of bantering uh, friendship here. I like sci-fi and low light. They're cool. I think it's cool how they have like stuff set out like that and have it marked for like 300 yards, 400 yards. Yeah. <laughs> I was a big fan of Beachhead as a kid because yeah. I just liked the outfit. He was like badass. And this here, like establishing right off, letting the kids know the lineup of who's in charge here. I thought that was important that they did that. Well, it's kind of important not only that they do that, but since they're showing so many different characters, that they're they're calling them all by name as well. You don't have to sit and yeah. wonder like who 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 the fuck is that? Because they would do that a lot, and I, it was important to me to, to you know you know to know. I mean, for as a, as a kid when I would watch these, when I, when a lot of season two would come, I was familiar with pretty much most of the lineup, like Slipstream or Flipstream. I she I tell you right now. <laughs> It was more about the ground guys, like, uh, and here we are with uh, Cover Commander Destro getting ready to go into battle with the bats. Yeah, God, I was such a fan of the bats. I remember seeing a kid in daycare came came to daycare with Serpentor and a bat, and I lost my shit <laughs> quietly. I'm like, oh my God, look, look at the the the, the hologram yeah. like emblem on his chest, yeah. and they were so cool looking. And I like these two, Dial Tone and Mainframe. Mainframe's my favorite of these two. He's got a really good episode where he has kind of a, a, a budding uh, romantic relationship with Zorana, which is a really good episode I hope we get to cover sometime. It's kind of cool how they give them names like uh, Dial Up. Or Dial, dial tone. tone. I don't know why I'm saying yeah. Dial Up. I'm thinking like <laughs> internet now. So in my brain, I'm like, well, if they made it today, would they have a character named like Ethernet or something? Yeah, it'd be just stupid. Like, at, at least for that piece of shit G.I. Joe they did, like, Dial Toe was called Dial Toe. They didn't come up with anything else. Like, if we'll you're going to do it, we'll you got to. They, they could have call, uh, called him Dial Up and then, you know, had the whole Dial Up internet tone and made a joke out of it. Yeah, and Brendan first like, oh, whoa! I like uh, the stuns that are used here, right? They're, they're a really cool vehicle. I like how General Hawk <laughs> makes a point to. Pretty much say they're not that effective. Like the his tanks are stronger. And here they call them bats in full form. I and mean, we're seeing so many characters used right now, all in this this action sequence. I like Roadblock's new look. That's probably my favorite look that Roadblock had was was the Alpha D sporting right now. It's kind of setting up the reason why Serpentor is going to be created. But I like the idea that they're not that they 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 follow the Cobra cause to the end. They just see see that things should be done differently. And holy shit balls. Who the hell is this coming? Who is it, man? Who is it? <laughs> Who's the third man? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, there you go. There's, uh, there, yeah. there's Destro, which I guess we can get into that story after we're finished with the episode. Yeah, I'll tell that glorious story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, they, they really superhero up Sergeant Slaughter here. I mean, this, he's punches through walls. I mean, he's beating up robots with his bare hands. I mean, he is he's quite the... Uh, the star of this uh, second season here because he's, he's used a lot. And I, I never saw him that much as a kid. Yeah. I don't recall seeing him in any episode, yeah. uh, unfortunately. I think, aside from the movie. Yeah, well, the main time that I would see him would, because uh, he also did introductions for episodes at one point as well, right? Or was he just doing he, like the, the bumpers? He did the he did the opening uh, and closings for the uh, when they would play the movie on TV, he'd had introductions and closings for each episode. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So I, I would just see that and then occasionally see him in episodes. But I, this was around the time, too, that he, like, turned heel. So, yeah. So I'm, so, so, well, I, like, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm not too confused, but I just, it, it made it uh, difficult 
to kind of get behind him in here. I mean, I, I, I was still all for him in GI Joe, but as a wrestler, like he's the ultimate heel, turn you know, turning on America and challenging Hogan for the title. Like I, it's, I bought into it, but I would support him completely in GI Joe. And here's an introduction to Doctor Mindbender. Which to me is always even uh, was always a staple. Like I, uh, I just always assumed he was there, you know. And as I got older, and would go back and watch the entire series that I, I complete, and not knowing that he wasn't introduced till season two. I mean, like you know, I just always knew Cobra to have Doctor Mindbender. I never do him without. Um, like all this whole lineup here: Destro, Mindbender, and the Crimson Twins. Like to me, they're just they were always there. I never knew. G.I. Joe without them. Right. Uh, and even though the Deke series went on, like, Destra's there, but a different look. Mindbender's not there. The Crimson Twins are not there. It's But it was just such a staple, even though they were pretty much discontinued characters. But they would be in the comic books, though. They used all these characters in the comic book series, which uh, uh, I knew of and only had a couple as a kid, not too many. And now back to G.I. Joe. I'm glad they put those little bumpers on. on yeah, the they're, DVD. They're, they're classic. They're beautiful. And I like this. This here, like when Slaw was, uh, was talking about, I got some new recruits. It makes me think of the Renegades that are in oh, the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's just kind of, it ties it together. Not that it was done that way, but when you watch it, you feel like that's who's at the slaughterhouse right now, that he's getting ready to train. And when we met Sergeant Slaughter a few years back, did you really ask him too many questions about his work on here or was it mostly wrestling related questions? Uh, no, all I all I asked him was about G.I. Joe. I didn't ask him a single thing about wrestling. Um I just wanted to do the the uh, recreation of WrestleMania seven, like the, the 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 promotional art of him and Hogan staring at each other. Yeah. But I asked him about the movie and he, he didn't tell me a whole lot other than that he really enjoyed it and he was there at the premiere and got to see Burgess Meredith. He's I don't think he said Don Johnson was there, but he spoke very highly of it. Um and I, I just, like so many times, you just kind of don't force it, but you just kind of go along with it. I mean, I could have asked so much more. Right. But, I mean, God, he was so big in person, a lot bigger than you yeah, think. Yeah, he's way taller. Yeah. Than I ever would have imagined. And some people are just way shorter than I ever would have imagined. Yeah. But wrestlers never cease to surprise. I mean, like it's it's amazing just how really big they are in person. But this is a, an interesting uh, sequence that we're seeing here how, of how Mindbender gets the idea. And I guess you connect this to the movie, which I like to think I, I appreciate the movie and I embrace the story, but I don't look at it as, as like prominent continuity. Right. Because if you watch this and see the movie, you see that he's having this dream due to the psychic motivator that uh, Galopulus had sent to be placed, I guess, in his ear or something. I don't know how it happens. It's just kind of kind of a bogus idea made to connect everything together. I would much rather believe that Mindbender just had the dream and the vision to do this. Yeah, Slaughter looks awesome as a G.I. Joe. Oh, yeah. He fits in perfectly. Yeah, yeah. and I, I know, like, in later years, they, they threw in Roddy Piper as a member of the Iron Grenadiers, like Destro's group. Um... Uh, Matt Tracker from Mask is a, is a kind of a honorary GI Joe, so kind of throwing in these different characters and um, you know if they had done that today, like GI Joe is they're re-releasing for kids, the same characters going with the same thing, same size, everything. Right. But if they managed to throw in current day celebrities, would we buy it? I didn't know who the fridge was as a kid. Oh, I yeah. just knew there was a <laughs> I just knew there was a GI right. Joe. And he was called the fridge, and he he looked like a football player. He looks awesome. I don't care, but I want him. Right. I had no idea he was a football player for the Chicago well, Bears. Right. Not until I, like many years later. I'll throw you the question: If they were to do something like that nowadays, who would you who would be your pick? Um, I mean, I I was really intrigued when they were going to do you know uh, a Stallone tie in and have Rocky as a GI Joe, but it, it made more sense for it Rambo really does. to have been. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why they were and they were going to make Rocky like a GI Joe trainer and Big Boa would have been his arch rival uh, who's a boxer well, that, as well. That would have been cool, I guess. It but would Rambo have been cool makes the way bo- more sense. 
Yeah, like I, I just I don't understand why. Like, like John, John Matrix they, should have been a Joe. Yeah, yeah, tie that in Chuck Norris, you know, in the Karate Commandos. Like, I mean, just making Chuck Norris as a, I mean, a, a member of GI Joe, that could have worked. But um, Van Dam from Universal still, Soldier. Oh yeah, I mean, God, you could have you could have done so many cool yeah, things, like, or, I, or have I, Frank, Frank Dukes, since Frank Dukes was in in the military yeah. and Bloodsport. You could have done that as well, but uh, celebrities today, I don't know who they would have gotten because there's just really nobody. Um, John Cena, baby, you. John Cena. Uh, yeah, I- I'm sure they would have thrown in some bullshit shit wrestler. The Marine. Now, if it was like CM Punk as a member of Cobra or something like that, I, you know, uh-huh. not not that uh-huh. I feel like that fits, but yeah, I mean, um, he does have the tattoo after all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'd be, I just I was curious because I, you know. You know, did kids, uh, when the fridge was introduced, and Sergeant Slaughter, who was a wrestler at the time, is brought in and made a concrete member of the Joe mythology. Um, I assume it was pretty well well received, um, but uh, if they had done that today, I don't know if we would have looked as fondly upon uh, these celebrities, the character that they play, whatever it is, being made a member of the Joe team. I love this sequence here. <laughs> Which I know we're talking over the, the, the conspiracy meeting here, which is, is just great. And Cobra Commander Ella Destra just never never misses a chance to mock Cobra Commander at any, <laughs> any opportunity. I do like too how we gotta change this episode of like the helmet to the hood. Yeah, which happens a lot in the episodes where you may get both, you may just get one. Yeah. And uh I was as a kid. I was more partial to the battle mask, and as as I got older, I really appreciated the hood even more. Like I, I couldn't say I like one over the other um, because they're so genius yeah, and they're designed and so simple. But it's just how Cobra Commander just <laughs> turns Cobra. away and just go, just <laughs> goes along with the plan, and and that's what he does throughout this entire. Um, series is that and i like this little speech he gives scrap iron in the comics he's very intelligent um i mean all the villains are and, and they're pretty intelligent for the most part in the cartoon but they're they are kind of cut down a little bit um because the villains can't be but you know uh so aggressive because the comics allow them to be a lot more aggressive where people die right in the comics um yeah, obviously you People couldn't get do that beat up in an animated shot. series. No, 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 at least not 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 in this kind of series, and definitely not at that time. I'm surprised but that the, they the haven't. The comics were marketed towards kids. Yeah, so. I'm surprised they haven't tried to do more. Like, if they're gonna like reboot stuff in an animated form, why not just, especially if it's something like GI Joe, take it and make it appeal to the age that we are now. Have it have a little more adult content. There's snake eyes popping up for two seconds. Yeah. Which seems to be the, the 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 constant of him in the series, but in season one he's used prominently in certain episodes, which we've covered. Like Cobra's creatures, he's used in a uh, a decent uh, amount of time in that one. I like these night ravens here but, with the strato vipers driving them. Look how cool it is! Like the 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 small ship coming off, and it's a it's a good but, color scheme too. But oh, he had the black and red. Like, it's very slick. Like you know, uh, granted. Most of them aren't good, but you know how DC at least has animated f- films that come direct. Yeah. D- Why not do something like that with GI Joe? I didn't they kind of do something. Yeah, about fifteen uh, years the, ago. Like, yeah, like in the. Uh, it's like early mid to late two thousands. Yeah. yeah, it was GI Joe Resolute, which were like these these like very very short episodes. I think it total they were they were only like ten or fifteen minutes a piece. Um, the animation looked great, but I hated the voice acting in it. I, I they kept they used like the same generic voice actor that plays Wolverine and Wolverine of the X Men to play like Duke, which didn't fit at all, all right. and a lot of the other voices. But it looked really, really good. Um, I think everyone's favorite is, is the episode that's, that's just about Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow right. fighting, uh, which is a great fight sequence. But I, I just that's what bothered me it was the voice acting. If, if you don't have good voice acting, it takes me right out yeah. of it. But it looked really good though. And they made figures from it, and they released it on uh, <laughs> DVD, and you can watch it on YouTube as well. I like that little line there. I love a good cookout. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like what they've come upon this delivery, which is a this communicate to Zartan, which is a great way of like bringing in the Dreadnoughts because we got some new members of the Dreadnoughts being introduced here. This kind of a- 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 amps up the scale of the Joe team. Yeah. You know, you just kind of feel like this is going into so many more details here. There's Iceberg there and Leatherneck with Quick Kick mixed in. Yeah, it's uh I think Sergeant Slaughter is, is barely used at all in the comics. I mean he's he's pretty much an obsolete character, which is kind of odd. So it's, it clearly sounds like it was something that Hasbro was all behind, but I don't know how much control Larry Hama had over I mean he wrote the stories and everything and included, I'm sure, characters and toys that were being used at the time, but Sergeant Slaughter is barely in it. Yeah, there's probably just like a the thing is like, oh, we don't really want to use them, and Hasbro's like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll we yeah. got something set up with them. We'll make it work. I've always enjoyed the look of Zartan. Yeah, as a kid, I could never tell if that was a if that was his hair or a hood. I just I just always got confused because it would just kind of flow <laughs> like hair, right. but it's clearly a hood. Yeah. But but I, I love the character. I loved his voice. Uh, my brother was a big fan of Zartan in particular. Like the, I think that was his. But we, we kind of shared a lot of the common favorites, but I think Zartan and Firefly were, were big favorites of his, where I was, I was Storm Shadow and Destro, and we both loved Cobra Commander. But we all loved all members of Cobra, and we loved the Dreadnoughts. Like, we both loved uh, Xander, Zartan's brother, a lot. I always thought Zorana was really cool. I just thought she was a great female character. <laughs> Man, if I yeah, if I if I could just inch. properly grow facial hair, man, just put put some aviators on. There we go, done. That I, I you know actually before you said it, actually is like I see Nathan and Monkey Wrench here. You get that in an Aussie accent going, man. You can make Emily Zorano. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And you say you bloody dingo. And here's Thrasher. I like Thrasher. He's got a cool look. Thrasher. All the Dreadnoughts, like I don't think there's one one member of the Dreadnought team that doesn't fit. Right. Like they, to me, they all they all look like a cohesive unit. Like you don't feel like there's one weak link in the chain of Dreadnoughts. Like in this and, one, we get four new Dreadnoughts in this one episode, and, and they, they and they work. just look fucking cool. Like they they yeah they have, all of them. They have that. It's a good blend of like Mad Max. Yeah. And, uh, shit, I don't know. Bikers, Mad Max, like current day bikers, but they got a mix of, of Mad Max here. Like you see Road Pig, who's introduced in 88, and he's wearing a <laughs> lot of Mad Max gear. Uh, and that one. And this is such a cool, uh, team up here Slaughter, Beachhead, and Low Light. You got a sniper, you got a ranger. And you got Sergeant Slaughter, dude. Well, I think that that kind of that's like an all around team, you know. You got your yeah. you got your long distance, your mid, and your close, your close range guy. Yeah. That's what's so fun about it is you kind of feel like you feel like, well, they've got like four or five guys that are that are uh, uh, flamethrower experts. Like, who cares? Like, it's great to have multiple options yeah. of, of rangers and and snipers and things. And holy shit, here comes a thunder machine, which is kick-ass vehicle yeah I'm gonna... and just i love how the dreadnoughts reside in the swamps like i just think that's so it's such a great uh it looks awesome in the comics too zartan's got this small cabin in the swamps yeah i'm gonna have it's like to... in the Everglades of florida i'm gonna have to get my joes from my parents and have you come over and we'll, we'll dig through them because my, my oh yeah I, like i wish i had more from like eighty five to ninety, but most of mine are like eighty nine to like ninety two. Yeah. Well, I mean, and they are they're not too bad. If you want, if you don't mind, they're not you know complete. You know, I think you can get you know a lot of the eighties GI Joes. I mean, of course, if you want like Storm Shadow or something like that, you are going to pay a little bit, even if he's got nothing with him. But still, um, and the twenty fifth anniversary lineup of figures that that came out in the mid two thousands, which I bought a bunch of. 
when those came out. Like those, even those, like you know, you pay a little bit, but nothing major, and they all look great. Yeah. They're they're fully articulated. Um, I picked up a bunch of those and, and made a little diorama. Yeah, in yeah, my yeah, yeah. Room of that. yeah. You used like the what was it? Was it the Robin Hood? Yeah, the Robin Hood place. Yeah. I bought that off of eBay specifically for the Joe's which to, is, to set up a which is also like reused as that was like the Ewok. Yeah, the Ewok village yeah. just to modify it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Which was an awesome playset. Damn it. Because I wanted that so much as a kid. These episodes just go by so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, we, you know, we, we start talking about what's going on, and then we start kind of talking a little bit about some of the other shit, and before we know it, it, it episode's over. Yeah. But that's what happens when we have fun, dude. And, you know, that's why they fly by for us. We're, we're watching quality shit here, man. Well, hopefully it it flies by just as as well for everyone else that that tunes in and yeah. watches. I'm gonna say let's go ahead, let's do the next episode of Capes and Commentaries. We will do part two, and then the following one we'll go ahead and do that episode of Batman Beyond that was requested. Oh, I love it, dude! And then after that, we'll do part three. Yeah. Well, uh, hell, we, hell, we could even do for like one of these. We could do part three and four together, like yeah. we did with the trailer. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Watch them back. Well, to I back. was gonna say since they're all here on the same disc and everything, it makes it way easier. Yeah, if you wanna, you wanna make it like an extended or shit. You know, we can always do uh, part two and three together, and then part four and five together. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So uh, the next time you guys catch us on here, we'll we'll come at you with part two and part three. Yeah, that's that's what we'll do. Now before we uh, wrap this up. Tyler, let's go ahead and let's hear that Destro story. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was uh, just to let you know, like I, I downplayed my hype for for the Galaxy Con because I just you just don't know what how you're going to get treated. But de- but uh, Arthur Burkhart, the voice of Destro, was was in my top three of people I really wanted to meet, and uh, I met him last. And there was one person in this line, some some like very very small girl I, I assume she was probably like 17 18 if she was that because she was so tiny and they were talking about something that definitely was not gi joe i don't know what it was i wasn't trying to eavesdrop but i was like hurry the hell up girl i'm gonna get his <laughs> autograph and talk to him about about playing destro so while, while they're talking and stuff i i i pay for his autograph and i say that if you want an exact quote of that of something that he says in, in cartoons you can pay ten dollars and you can get that okay so the Alan Oppenheimer experience will not be repeated because I'm paying specifically for a quote. Ten dollars on top of purchasing an autograph and a picture. And when the girl finally leaves, Arthur's really distraught and is just talking to himself about how girls are abused by their fathers and calling them motherfuckers and and looking at me as if like I knew what he was talking about, I just kind of nod my head. I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like Destro's cussing at me, but he's not cussing at me, but he's cussing in front of me, and and just talking. I'm like, I have no idea what he was, where it was coming from. And I looked at his handler, and we just kind of looked at each other, like I don't know what the hell's going on here. And he was so persistent, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like I'm I'm standing here, what feels like ten minutes, listening to him go on about how women are abused. And he was telling me about some girl was dressed up as Carrie. And as she was talking to him, she went through three or four different emotions while talking to him. And he goes, you're going to be a great actor. I'm like, I don't know what that means, but okay. <laughs> and I just go along with it because he's talking to me as if like I know what he's oh, talking about. Yeah. And then he just kind of like breaks down. And I swear it looked like he was going to start crying at one point. And... Uh, I'm just staring at it like I could not feel like I, I, I was in my, in my mind. I felt like I'm ready to just walk away from this table. Just forget the money. I don't care. I just want to get out of here. But I toughed it out. And um, before he even acknowledges me I, or, or when he does kind of sit down, he's just kind of. <sighs> and I said, Arthur, are you OK? He goes, no, no, I'm not. I, I'm tired. I want to be at home. And I'm like, oh, my God, like I'm inconveniencing this guy. And then a guy comes by to ask him, hey, Arthur, can I get you anything? He's like, yeah, I don't like my coffee. It's just terrible. They didn't they didn't fix it the way that I wanted it. It's not right. He's like, all right, I'll take care of it. And he's like this. And they say, yes, and I want this and this in it. He's like, I'll take care of it. I'm like, 
I'm, I'm the last person on this planet, apparently, or I don't even exist on this planet. I don't know what 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 to think at this point because all this is still going on, right. and he's still not even saying, "What can I do for you, sir?" or "How are you today?" What is your name, sir? Like none of that is happening. He, he's this. just pull. He's just uh, uh yeah. Uh, and, and I'm leaving out like if you guys could really, because I I feel like Nathan and Emily were at least standing behind me. For maybe fifteen minutes. Yeah, we uh, we were leaning up against the wall that was probably like a good fifteen, twenty or so feet back, and sort of like diagonal from you. So I didn't hear. Yeah. Any, I couldn't hear anything, but I saw you just stand there with him. And when you guys started talking, I looked at her and I was like, "Man, it must be really, it must really be going well." Nope. Yeah, it was. Nope. It was absolutely uncomfortable. It was so uncomfortable. And then he, when he got ready to sit down, and he. He, he says, uh, he tells his handler, okay, uh, what are we doing here? And then he says, okay, give him another autograph, no charge. And then he sits down and says, okay, what are we doing on this? And I said, well, I'd like to put a quote on, on this this one here. And then I tell him what the quote was. He's like, oh, no. I'm like, oh, my God. It's Alan Oppenheimer all over again. <laughs> what, what, and I what, paid $10 what? to guarantee. Yeah, because it's there specifically put, like, Pay ten dollars more and, and get the quote. What was the quote? The quote was premature panic is the sign of an immature mind. And um I really did I just don't think it was that long. And really what it was is that he just writes really big. Yeah. Is what I came to find out. And I, I guess all these people, these things, they just assume they're just gonna write mm, to uh Jack Mehoff. Signed, you know, <laughs> blah blah blah. And that is yeah. it. They just yeah. don't expect you to want yeah, anything. Yeah, just anymore. just just to your name, regards, and then they sign it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that's it. And so I gave him the quote and I felt really uncomfortable because he, he just kinda made such a stink about it. But then he writes it in silver. He asked me what color I wanted. And I'm just kind of standing there because you just felt like, oh, my God, what the hell have I got myself into? So I'm not asking him about playing Destro or voice acting or anything that I had intended to ask him. I'm just trying to get through getting this autograph. And uh, and, he, and then he's, he finishes writing it, and then I realized the, the problem was because he says, I don't know if I could fit it because the way he writes. Right. And then he writes his name and Destro and Cobra all in the same <laughs> 8 by 10 so he just, it's like, well, no wonder, dude, you write so damn big. Right. And then he gives me the other one. And then he says, well, what's your name? And I, and I said, it's Tyler. And then he, okay. And he goes to Tyler, you know, Cobra, Arthur, Bernhard, Destro. And, uh, and this, all right, hope you enjoy it. I appreciate it. And then his hand says, oh, he gets a picture too. And he goes, oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, man. <laughs> he just, he just I, I, don't want to do anything for you. No, and I don't know what if because I, I I thought about wearing this tank top, yeah. but I don't know if it would have made any difference, <laughs> you know. Yeah, he just would have looked at me like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I just felt like, uh... <laughs> you know, and I and I I had seen in an interview like, or he'd done like uh, some uh, Q and A's at conventions before. He's barely he hasn't done many. Of these. Right. Like he's just now starting to do the con circuit within the last three years. But I guess, you know, he'd been there since Thursday. This was Saturday, and I guess he just had, had yeah, enough. Yeah, just burn out, ready to go. Just burn out already, and uh, and I, I felt the full force of it. But he got up, and he's a big guy. Yeah, um, he's a tall dude. He's a tall dude. And uh, so he uh, he's, 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 he's okay, let's make sure we get, get, get ourselves right here. Just make sure you get the banner, because he wanted to make sure, like, it was picture yeah. uh, quality, the banner and everything that you could see, you know, who he was and who he played all behind us and we take i think four or five pictures and uh and he, and he kindly says you know all right i'll check them up make sure they look good we want to make sure we get, you get some good pictures it was like his demeanor he j- just changed within seconds like it changed while we were doing the autograph he finally calmed down and then when he realized he had to get it for a picture then he got mad again <laughs> and then when we took the pictures he calmed down again and um <laughs> he was so polite to me right. while we were taking the pictures and shook my hand and thanked me with a big smile on his face like what the hell just happened so you didn't ask him anything no 
Not a single damn thing. Me- meanwhile, and I, I look- was sitting there thinking it's going well, and then when you meet up with you, I'm like, hey, man, how'd it go? It looked like it went well, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> you got both. I'm like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> you got both of the 8x10s in your hands, and you're just staring at me all wide. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck just happened. Yeah, it, it was... It was... <laughs> Uh, I, I, I would say probably <laughs> the most um, indescribable experience I think I've had at a convention. I've had some bad moments. I've had some absolutely out-of-this-world moments. And you just don't know what to make of that one. I don't know what to make of it. I got a free autograph. Um, he did write the quote that I paid for begrudgingly. Uh, he took pictures with me, multiples oh, man. begrudgingly. Oh, no. Yeah, I just, God, he just acted like everything that I, I was just going by the rules. It, it just, and I think, like, they, they he had taken a break early in the day because we walked right past where he was at and he wasn't there. Right. And the Baroness was there and so was Storm Shadow. Right. And no one was at their tables. And, um, but by that point, I'm like, I, I just, I want to get the hell out of here. <laughs> And, that, and it took me a while to kind of calm down from like the shitty Polly Shore experience, right. uh, the unbelievable Judith Hogue experience, right. the great Will Friedel, Friedel experience, and then I got this. I don't know what the hell to make of yeah. it, but it makes for a memorable story because this character that has been with me since I mean I, for so long as a, as a you know since childhood was cussing and fussing yeah. about coffee and girls being abused and motherfucker and um. And gives me a free autograph, but you know, <laughs> I still know what to make of it. Yeah, I still don't. But those eight by tens were beautiful. They look great. I've yet to put them in frames because I have yet to go by Walmart and buy frames for right. them. Hell, my turtles poster still has not been put up. Yeah, I need to put my turtles I was, poster I was up just too. So I was, I do, but I, I never posted the pictures on Facebook because I was just so like dismissive about the whole thing. I was so. Yeah, depleted from the experience. Yeah. Like I just, I didn't want to share it. I didn't really want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, well, I told time I was like, hey, let's just record like a, a podcast real quick, just to cover the experience. But I think it was the best way to do it. We talk about Destro on this. Maybe uh, do we? Are, we we talked about Polly Shore on Fans of Power, right? I think. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. We did, and it was just you know such a shit experience too. But Judith Hug was a sweetheart to to me and Nathan. Yeah. And Will Friedel was what I thought he was going to yeah, be, yeah. which he's was open um, around. He's not sitting down. He's talking to everybody like, yeah. Hey, how's it going? You liking the con? Like, what do you think? Everything. And just those, are, those are the good experiences. Yeah. And then I met Edward James almost, which was yeah. good. But then I, he, he cut me short, which kind of threw me off because they were trying to move the line along, which made me feel like I was being dismissed. Um, because in the moment when I'm asking him, I'm like, all right, I'm making headway. And like, okay, oh, let's take the picture. I'm like, oh, shit, man. Yeah. Like, I just got cut off, and which was... Mm. Yeah. And, and, and it just it just makes you feel like, you know... and I don't know. <laughs> I'm just... I, I, at least I've had so many good experiences where they will welcome conversation about their career and they will talk to you like judith hogue talked to me nathan both yep. each individually yep. for a long time yeah. so much so Will that, well, well, we had us. a there was a line forming behind us with her yeah but but i and you could tell like her handler kept looking but judith was focused on t- just talking to me and nobody yep. else and when it was nathan's turn yeah talking to him and emily and nobody else yeah. I, I tried to kind of pull you back into the conversation too as you were standing there, I asked her about the NECA stuff since NECA is putting out a lot of merchandise for the movie. If they had reached out to her about using her likeness to make a figure and she said that they hadn't yet, uh, that, you know, there is a price tag involved. So hopefully NECA will, uh, honor that. Cause that would be great. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I can't see why they wouldn't. I, I kind of feel like she'll probably be hearing about it sometime in the near future because you know, I don't. I just don't see them not doing an April O'Neil figure yeah, from the movie. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. But we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see how maybe something will come down the pipeline with that. Yeah, but uh, but fortunately too, it didn't didn't uh, destroy my appreciation for GI Joe by being felt like I was cut down by the voice of Destro. <laughs> like I, I. That's what I was worried was going to happen. Yeah. So was I. But I. Uh, I actually watched some G.I. Joe the next day, and I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm not really faced by this. I think probably because I just kind of put it out of my mind, even though my my mood was 
really down, right. but it, I it has not affected my my passion for GI Joe. Um, I felt a bit disgruntled after when we met the cast of Fright Night, and it wasn't as great that first night. And it kind of left a sour taste in my mouth watching Friday Night because Chris Sarandon was so weird to us. And William Ragsdale was playing on his phone to the point where, um, I forgot, um, Billy Cole, the actor who plays Billy Cole, had to like, dude, get off your phone, man. You got people waiting on you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of unprofessional. made me feel a do. little uncomfortable. Right. So you just kind of feel like, God, man. So I, I don't want that to happen, you know, when you, you have a bad experience with somebody. Like, I don't want to feel like I can't watch Encino, man, without thinking of Pauly Shore. <laughs> I having two very unenthusiastic moments meeting Pauly Shore. Yeah. So Which, um, uh, mine's counterbalanced because I met Sean Astin, and he, he was nice yeah. and answered and talked to me about everything I want to talk to him about, even, even when his handler was sitting there trying to rush me along. I even looked at her. I was like, yeah, hang on a second. <laughs> like, no, 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 you, I, I'm like, hey, sit hey, the hell down here. hey, lady, I'm getting my shit in. All right, you just, you yeah. just got to deal with it. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang that somewhere because it, it definitely. And I think, and we talked about this before. I think that's just how Polly Shore is. I think that's just his personality. He's so over the top and everything, like in the early night and all the movies that he was in. But I, I just think as a person, he, he's kind of an asshole. So I, I think that's yeah, just what it is. Um, I mean, he did the picture with me. And the picture looks awesome. Um, he he did the quote, which isn't much, but you know, Sean Astin wrote a lot, which I which I'm like you now. I'm like anytime it's something more than two words, I'm afraid like oh shit, they're gonna be like this is too much. Make a segment. What are you doing, man? Yeah. But I'm starting to think too that uh, because these cons are starting to go up in price, and they're, everyone's wanting to jump on the bandwagon. Most most people don't. From what I gather, most people don't give a shit to really talk to them about stuff like you and I do. They probably get it. Yeah, they probably get it a little bit, but not, not as much. Most people are just oh, oh my god, oh my, it's nice, holy shit, it's nice to meet you. Oh yeah, to, uh, to Patrick, uh, blah blah blah, sign, like regards, all the best. Yeah, now please get the hell out of here. Step to the side. Yeah. You know, where you're just you're treated like cattle. Yeah. All right, move on. Right. Keep moving. Yeah. Keep moving. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, you know, look, I get that you guys are trying to get as many people in here, but if you're asking these kind of prices, damn it, I'm going to get my time yes. with this actor or actress, yeah. man. I think the only thing that's really going to pull me back to want to go to one of these is if John Carpenter is there, if Robert England's there, and I go ahead and get my ticket ahead of time because I know that he's amazing with everybody that, that comes yeah. and meets him. So. Uh, probably one of those two, or if Kurt Russell decides to show up to anything, which I, I imagine that that will probably be brief, but that would still be cool to meet the man. Oh God, I just don't know if I could. I, if, I, if they were like, I mean, if yeah. they were like, all right, Carl Weathers is coming, you'd have to go. But it would have to be <sighs> someone of that caliber to get you to. But I, I can see your hesitation because what if you meet them and they suck and then it just sort of ruins. Everything going forward. Kids don't well, it, don't meet your heroes. Well, see, that's what worries me is that you know you feel like you know. All right, say hypothetically, Carl was is announced for for GalaxyCon next year, yeah. and nobody else I could give two shits about, yeah. but just Carl Weathers, which I I I I I I'd do whatever it took to meet Carl Weathers. Period. Yeah. I would just love to ask him about his workout routine, you know, or what he did for Action Jackson, working on Predator and Rocky. Just working out alone, let alone the stuff he's done in the films. Right. But you're conditioned now, like, I can't ask him anything because I'm going to be looked at for being a weirdo or I'm being rushed. And then when you get up there and he acts as like, so, you know, so tell me about you, you big fan. Or if they start interacting with you, then you're lost because you're conditioned to not th to feel like you can't ask anything. And then when they do address you and make you feel like your presence is wanted and appreciated, then you feel like, I could have asked him something, but I was always made to feel like we don't have time. Yeah. Or it's not, they don't care to actually answer a question about something that they did. You know, and that's what worries me. That's kind of how I was going into Galaxy Con. And then when Polly Shore shuts me down pretty quickly, I'm like, well, oh my God, like I got a long ways to go. I may be shot down every time after this now. You know, so you just, you just kind of feel like, man. 
and and that, that just goes back to the thing like I, i'm sorry you're paid to be there and people are paying you to interact with you so to me that is you're at work like be professional don't just sit here and like shut people down or be a diva because oh uh, well i i am someone of celebrity who who the fuck are you like that's not how this works so yeah i don't uh, i don't foresee us really going to any more of these unless someone of yeah a caliber of a carl weathers or john carpenter or someone is close by yeah it, it's gonna have to be something that um I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, like if, if I mean, Judith Hogue and Destro were like the two, and then when Edward James almost was announced, I'm like, all right, oh my god, like, uh, I have to have that has to happen too. But uh, yeah, it's uh, 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 unless it's something like like Carl or Dolph Lundgren or something, hell, even Chuck Norris. <laughs> um, I'm I'm done. I'm retired from it. Yeah. I just Same I, here. I, it's the, these people mean so much to me more than I think they do to most people. And it's not to say that they're not fans, but I, I just hold these the, these characters that they've played in such high regard. They, they've given me so much joy over and over and over again. I'm 35 years old, and I'm still revisiting their work multitudes, I mean, multiple, multiple times. And I just, I just really want to say I, I thank you, and I, I just want to ask you about this, and then I'll move along. And when I feel like I can't even do that without feeling like, my presence and the money that you know I I earned, worked hard for, and, and just wanted to ask you something about one film. Yeah, and and I don't have time for that. I, I got to get over here and fart or something <laughs> like that. You know, I I just which is what Polly Shore made me feel like he after he signed it and you know oh yeah I'll I'll do that and then he stepped away from the table and left me hanging. Out. Okay, I guess I'm done here. Yeah, yeah, it was, you know yeah, yeah, it, was it, it, it was it was just really disheartening, man. I um. And it might be it might be my fault because I, I I I just have this affection for these characters and the actors that played them so much and I just I guess I guess I just care too much and because I care too much yeah but I it's leave not myself it, vulnerable. yeah but it's not like your psycho fan going up to him like in hysterics God, no. or anything like you're going up no I, I do have a great track record of actually having some interesting conversations yeah. with a lot of the people that me and Nathan have met right. but when the bad ones start piling up even more, you, you do feel like I'm scared to do it yeah. because that's money, you know, it's well, money. Yeah, well, not man. to mention the prices are going up for like, people just think that, Oh, I was famous 30 years ago. Well, that's, that's $85. It's like, yeah, eh, you should probably be about 40 or 30, maybe 20. Honestly, 20 for, I mean, in general, I think 30, 40 at the max. Yeah. I mean, but now 40 is, is kind of the minimum. Yeah. Yeah. For a lot of these people, right. which is sad. Yeah. You know? It's a shame. I mean, it's scary. It, it, it's, it, and that that's just kind of leaves me for like, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm right and, there. I, and I hate that. Well, I mean, I do too, but I'm right there with you. So we'll, we'll see what, uh, Mad Monster looks like and see. What they get lined up for Galaxy Con next year, but uh, count us out. Yeah, at least for I mean, now. It's... it's gonna it's gonna have to take somebody <laughs> to really draw us in. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I feel like, you know, and I know that. Oh, well, that that's why you need to limit the damn tickets. If 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 you feel like you know you got to rush everybody along, then have have a set amount for each actor for that day, and if they sell out, then that's all they that's all they're gonna do. Yeah. You know, I I just feel like it's not. I know that that these assholes who run these things they just love charging out the ass because others have gotten away with. Or oh, we're going to do it too. Yeah. I get it from a business standpoint, right. but you know, if you're going to treat the guests like they they don't have time and they're just made to feel like okay, uh, beat it. You know, or they're going to take a cattle prod to your armpit if you don't move <laughs> fast enough. You know, right. so yeah. okay, it just really saddens me. It just, well, it, it, especially when you think about like that first year we went to Mad Monster and how cheap everybody oh, and, and how we were having like 15, 20 minute conversations with everybody that we went and talked yeah. to. And it's just, it's not like that anymore. Granted, that was like a first year con. That was like the first time they had ran that. And that's that's grown quite a bit as well. 
to the point. But still disorganized. Yeah, still just as not... disorganized, and they can't get their shit together. Yeah, you would think after this yeah. many years, because it's that's been what like seven years now, eight years. I think we went to that one in twenty twelve. Yeah, so seven years. And, yeah, seven years and ago. They still can't figure out like how a, a line fucking works. Then yeah, you got you got problems. Yeah, or hiring people to help out who don't know jack. Yeah, don't shit. know jack shit. I guess they just show up and they're like, "Well, here's your shirt. You're gonna stand right here." Okay. Be, be as angry and awkward as you possibly can to the guests. Yeah. You know, or you know, people you bring in the people who really don't give two shits about being there. Like, why do you agree to fly cross country just so you can sit at a table, charge forty dollars for miserable an autograph, the whole time. and be miserable the whole time? Like. Like just don't show you know. up. Yeah, just just cancel. Yeah, cancel. cancel. Be like, hey, I got I got a film project. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or I I, I haven't shit in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, so I'm, really, I'm really, yeah, constipated. really constipated. The pills aren't working. Yeah. Uh, suppositories aren't working. They just keep falling out of my ass. And uh, I can't shove enough shit in my ass to get the <laughs> shit out of my ass. Right, here. Right. I'm, just like, I, I, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Dude, you don't have to give me a logical excuse. Just say you're not going to show up if you're going to sit there and pull a Tom Savini. Uh, well, I don't want to get into Savini again. He's a jerk. Anyway, yeah. uh, Tyler, any, any any other things that, that you got on your mind before you uh, wrap her up and shut her down for an, another episode? Uh, I, uh, God, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say here. Um, Be on the lookout for that sound wave. Yeah, be on the lookout for Soundwave. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be hearing, uh, you know, when we do another episode, we'll have an idea of who's coming for Thundercats. Yep. Um, I know there's a, the, the Snake Eyes movie is in pre-production right now, and it's set for 2020 release, which is next year. But I, if they're in pre-production still, I don't know how the hell that's going to happen. Just cheap and fast. Um, maybe, I'll watch, and was a, maybe I'll watch Retaliation tonight. Why? I don't, why? I don't know, because I haven't seen it. And I know it's I know it's better than the first one. Yeah, but that's like saying you know the really bad diarrhea you had yesterday. <laughs> and, and I mean that was. And I I don't mind the Rock too much. We'll see where it goes. The Rock playing Roadblock, and the Rock is the leader of the GI Joe team because it's mo- the honestly, Rock... it's mostly just to piss you off. Did you see that uh, they put that that Rocco movie on Netflix? I watched it last night. Uh, I kept thinking, no, no, <laughs> it's. I haven't checked Netflix in a while, yeah, even yeah. when I watch some of Stranger Things. I, yeah, it's all, I kept it's thinking, like, it, I, okay, I, I would see stuff where it pop up, but I assume, hey, it's coming, but I just yeah. didn't know it was already available. Yeah, it's, well, uh, it's 45 minutes long. Uh, it, it might have some stuff in it that you might be like, ah, why are they shoehorning this? But it's, it's a good way to look at, uh, they're kind of wondering where the 90s went to, and there's a lot of little fun little jabs and how shit is today so it, it's enjoyable i wouldn't say it's like i'll definitely check I it out i wouldn't say man. it's like super super amazing but it's, it's got a lot of chuckle worthy stuff in it yeah i'll check it out yeah. then all right since I, now that i know i, I feel like I, I, I i've as much as i keep up with entertainment things that are coming out i feel like i'm so far removed from a lot of things. i'm kind of getting that way myself actually yeah i just kind of stay in my bubble and rewatch old stuff and just pay my bills and look for cool things to buy if I can afford it. Look right. for new tank tops, go to the gym, play He-Man for about an hour, hour and a half to two hours. And do the podcast. And we're... Do the podcast and start it all over again. Yeah. It's, oh man. Oh, it's, it's yeah. starting to sink now. I'm like, shit, I'm going to wake up and I got to deal with these idiots again. Shit. Well, if it makes you feel any better, like I, my workload is like I worked over today. I'll probably do it tomorrow. Well, and then I'm back to my regular yeah, college kids you know, are back, man. Yeah, starting next week, they start coming back to the dorm. So um, I'm back. We'll be back to get up at 530 in the morning. Ugh. Nope. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. So just look at it that way. At least you get to sleep in. That's true. Huh. You know, yeah. and then go to work later on in the day. But I would wake up at 530 every day to have my evenings off. So Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about turning to the dark side and seeing if there's any first shift availabilities. I don't. I, I just don't know how you continue the rest of like keep work, constant work in the night shift I, like you do. I don't know. Something about it, I guess. I don't know. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, tie a nice little bow on this episode. It's been a lot of fun. We hope you had fun, too. And if you did enjoy, like the video. Leave a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts on the whole five-parter. 
maybe some of uh, uh, your convention horror stories. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified when we go live. Check out all the links down below. You can uh, hit Joe up for a custom and buy one of his t-shirts or uh, check out Fans of Power, the He-Man and the Master Universe podcast hosted by Tyler Baker, Joe Amato, and myself. You can find that at youtube.com slash fanspowerpodcast. And you can download us on Podbean and iTunes. And I want to, once again, throw that out there as a suggestion. You guys hop on over to the YouTube channel. Give us a sub. Support the channel. YouTube.com slash Beyond Retro Podcast. Tyler, it's been a pleasure. Certainly has. And uh, I enjoy this immensely. And I hope everybody else did too from the highs and lows of this episode and moving on to. If you got a G.I. Joe episode you want us to review, throw it at yeah, us. Throw, you know? throw that out there. You know? we, already got the, yeah. we already got Batman Beyond as a request. You guys got a yeah, specific so. Joe episode or anything else? Let us know down below. And until then, we will see you in the future to talk about the past. Bye, everybody.